Welcome to this episode of The Soul Trap. It is so wonderful to have you join with us. Today, we are going to be talking about mutants and mystics, science fiction, superhero comics, and the paranormal, a book written by Jeffrey J. Cripple. And we trust that wherever and whenever this broadcast finds you, it finds you in good health, good spirits, and most importantly, on that good and narrow way. I have often wondered, how did the average Jewish person process the parting of the Red Sea? In other words, I take the Bible literal where the Bible is literal, as we should, and put yourself, not as Moses or Joshua or Caleb or Aaron, but put yourself as a regular Jewish slave. Just 30 days earlier, you were making brick. Then a guy who you knew as the Prince of Egypt shows up by the name of Moses. Plagues are unleashed. He tells you to take the blood of a lamb and put it on the doorpost of your house. And that night you can hear the screams of the Egyptians as they suffer the judgment of God on the Passover. He says, grab everything you got, pack up, we're going. And in just a few short days, you're standing at the Red Sea and a thousand feet on one side and a thousand feet on the other are walls and you watched in stunned amazement as the Red Sea parted before your eyes. Well, was it stunned amazement? I've often thought about Pharaoh. Certainly his heart was hardened, but don't you think that seeing the Red Sea part might have given you cause to not go in after them? How did they process these stunning, powerful miracles that we would call paranormal? How did they process Moses as a God, as a prophet, as a superhero? How did you process the Jericho walls coming down? or rivers out of the rock? How did Abraham mentally process the sky unleashing a hailstorm on Sodom and Gomorrah to the point where he was able to see 70 miles away from the plains of Mamre the remnants of Sodom and Gomorrah going up in smoke like a furnace? Was there a time when this kind of strange and beyond imagination events were actually accepted as the norm? or at least accepted as more possible and probable than today. I wonder if the veil that separates our world from the next was somewhat thinner back then, and if their processing ability of the possibility was somewhat different. I wonder now if after the age of reason and the industrial revolution and the technology age, or as Toffler would talk about the third wave, I. I wonder if, after all of these, we are seeing a return to the acceptance in some epistemological level, a, a, an existence where we now can begin to accept more and more the strange and the paranormal, where we are actually looking for the strange world of the stars and the gods, the watchers, once again breaking into our world in an obvious and conditioned way to where this is not as no abnormal as you would think. Now, with these kind of musings as a backdrop, I think it's very interesting to think about these things as we come across a book by Jeffrey Cripple known as, called The Mutants and Mystics. And here's what catches my attention about it. Science fiction, superhero comics, and the paranormal. Let me read to you a clip from inside of the book and give you a heads up about what's going on. In many ways, the 20th century America was the land of superheroes and science fiction. From Superman and Batman to the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, these pop culture juggernauts with their powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men thrilled readers and audiences and simultaneously embodied a host of our dreams and fears about modern life and the onrushing future. But that's just scratching the surface, says Jeffrey Cripple. In Mutants and Mystics, Cripple offers a brilliantly insightful account of how comic book heroes have helped their creators and fans alike 
explore, and express a wealth of paranormal experiences, ignored often by mainstream science. Delving deeply into the work of major figures in the field, from Jack Kirby's cosmic superhero sagas and Philip Dick's futuristic head trips to Alan Moore's sex magic and Whitley Strieber's communion with visitors, Cripple shows how creators turn to science fiction to convey the reality of the inexplicable and the paranormal they experienced in their lives. Now, what's interesting about that is, is that I think the point the book is getting at, and at least the point we're getting at is, is that if you want to see what is really happening, if you want to see the intersectionality of the paranormal, of the UFO, of the world, of the thinning of the veil, of this new era that we're moving into, an era of the gods returning once again, you don't have to look to the macabre and dark waves and dark gothic dancing around bonfires. You don't have to look, you don't have to do that. What you have to do is look to where they are expressing themselves. Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, Twilight. These may give you more insight and a deeper look into the dark that is coming, more so than we think. There is something profoundly otherworldly profoundly paranormal, and I would submit to you profoundly God's coming down to us about the uprise here within the last 20 years of the mutants and, myst and mystics, of the superheroes, and of the paranormal. Jeffrey writes in his book something that's very interesting on page number six. He states, accordingly, this level of my argument is much more speculative in its attempt to confront the impossible fact that many of the extraordinary capacities that science fiction stories and superhero comics treat as fantasies, such as tele uh, telepathy, precognition, psychokinetic or magical influences, subtle bodies and energies, cosmic unity and clairvoyance, to name the most common, are well-documented experiences in the history of folklore, religion, and psychical research. In other words, what he's saying is, is that what you find in the gods of ancient lore, you find in Superman and Aquaman. These things are real in the simple sense that they happen. What they mean is an entirely different issue. But whatever they mean, I think it is safe to say that the sci-fi and superhero fantasies reflect and exaggerate these real-world paranormal capacities. Whether a particular reader finds this aspect of my argument convincing will depend largely on whether or not he or she has experienced such things. It seems relevant to admit up front what I have already explained in too many other places, namely that I have experienced such things. In Calcutta in early November of 1989 to be precise. To employ the mythical language of superhero comics, that encounter is the true origin of this present book. That is when I got bit by my own radioactive spider, who instead of a many-limbed spider, happened to be a many-limbed tantric goddess. Note the connection. It happened like this. For days I had been participating in the annual Bengali celebration of the goddess Kali in the streets and temples of Calcutta. One morning I woke up asleep. That is, I woke up, but my body did not. I couldn't move. Now let me pause. Notice the connection again. Many times in the UFO abduction cases, we have the physical paralysis, but the mental awareness. Same thing happening here. He says, I woke up, but my body did not eat. I couldn't move. I was paralyzed like a corpse, more or less, exactly like the Hindu god Shiva, as uh, like the Hindu god Shiva, as he is traditionally portrayed in tantric art, lying prostrate beneath Kali's feet. Then those feet touched me. An incredibly subtle, immensely pleasurable, and terrifyingly powerful energy entered me, possessed me, completely overwhelmed me. My vibrating body felt as if I had stuck a fork in a wall so socket. Perhaps more significantly, my brain felt as if I had suddenly hooked up to some sort of a cult. 
almost an occult internet, and that billions of bits of information were being downloaded into its neural net, or better, it felt as if my entire being was being reprogrammed or rewired. A door in the night, a portal had opened. That is what Jeffrey is getting at in Mutants and Mystics. What he is saying is, is that if you look across the genre of movies, if you look across the genre of superheroes, of mutants, of mystics, they mirror what is taking place in the occult world. They mirror it because they are a reflection of it. Gods from the sky, superheroes from the inner earth. It's one and the same. Jeffrey writes about British writer Alan Moore. He states, British writer Alan Moore understands the arts to be deeply intertwined with occultism, by which he means a particular worldview that asserts that the physical world, accessible to the senses, is surrounded and infused with another invisible world. Occultus is Latin for hidden. It is a hidden world seemingly inhabited by a whole host of subtle beings and demonic creatures. Well, listen, I don't need Alan Moore and I don't need Jeffrey Cripple to tell us that. If you have a Bible, it tells you that this is going on right now. What's interesting is he goes on to say, hence his mind-blowing Prometheus series from 1999 to 2005, an elaborate compendium of occult philosophy, Jewish mysticism, the tarot, tantric yoga, psychedelia, countercultural history, and sex magic, all expressed, all gorgeously illustrated by J.H. Williams and colleagues in the form of, wait for it, a superhero comic book. What's fascinating is you and I think that it's uh, these dark, sinister red rooms, and maybe they're out there. But I submit to you that more people may be coming in contact with the spirit world through their phone and through comic books, through these new forms and media than we may think. The 32 books of the series are organized around Moore's own unique vision of the Kabbalah and its luminous spheres, sapphire-like reflections or numbers of the divine nature in Jewish mysticism rendered as an abstract diagram sometimes referred to as the tree of life. There are 22 pathways connecting these 10 spheres, hence the 32 of Promethea. The point he's getting at is, it's not your Bible bookstore that is the only spiritual place to get information. It may be your local comic book store. I have some theories on that, which I will share with you never. So what are we getting at? Well, you should always be reading your Bible. You should always be reading Christian material. But I advise you to pick up Mutants and Mystics. Give it a read. What you'll find is that there might be things happening in plain sight. As above, so below. The occultists, the hidden, but hidden in plain sight. What's going on today? Baal? Moloch? Ashtoreth? Maybe it's Superman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman. It's not just your dark, shadowy, sinister bookstore. It might be your comic books that are unleashing and telling you the modern day lore and myth of the superheroes, or what you and I would call the gods. The gods will use you, but they will not help you. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. 